Hey, my people, what's going on? This is Major, you're tuning to Major TV. Let's talk. I have to go there and just share this article that just came out regarding one of the people that was actually part of the ride on January 6th. He actually punched the officer, according to reports. I want to talk about the sure disparity and um, the way how this ongoing system of discrimination and racism show how they treat whites versus blacks, which we already know. I'm just reiterating a known fact and problem in our community. Man, since the 41 months for selling officer, for selling officer in Capitol Ride, he has sold the officer now. Understand what they're trying to see with this, right? Sentence given to Scott Fairlam, a former New Jersey gym owner, is the most severe so far for any of the more 650 people charged in January 6th attack. Now, it said the harsh, uh, so far the harshest punishment. You can imagine on anything under 41 months or under three years, it's still like a slap on the wrist. A former New Jersey gym owner who was the first person to plead guilty to selling Police officers during the attack on Capitol Hill in January was sentenced on Wednesday to 41 months in prison. The most severe punishment given so far to any of them, any of the more than 650 people charged in the riot. The gym owner, Scott Fairlam, admitted in August to breaking into the Capitol, actually broke into the Capitol, sacred place. And then after he left, approaching the people, excuse me, approaching a group of people outside, they were making their way through a large and angry group of pro-Trump pro, um, protesters. A barking, beer hated man who once competed as a mixed martial artist, Mr. Furlan, could be heard on video shouting at the office, are oh, you an American? Act like it. Then unprompted, Mr. Farrell um, shoved one of them and punched him in the face. Actually, actually shoved him. Then he punched him in the face. An actual police officer, law enforcement officer. Just imagine that was a black person. How it would have been? At a hearing in Farrell, just recording Washington, Mr. Farrell um, apologized in halting tone to his family, saying he had torn the name that they had built with his complete reckless actions. His father once worked for New Jersey State Police and his brother, the Secret Service agent who was formerly assigned to Michelle Obama. Wow. You see how they throw that in there, right? They just slide that in there. Like, you know, hey, um, he was a good old boy. He, his, his brother was a, a New Jersey State, I mean, it's on, um, that is, his father was a New Jersey State Police and his brother worked for Super Service. They always butted on up, right? When a white person is being prosecuted and convicted and going to the prison, they come from a black person, they're going to show everything bad, find the worst picture. They're going to try to find the worst things in the background. They ain't never talk about nothing. They listen this whole article. Check this whole article out. They never say anything bad about him. They, they never really... They never really even talked about anything he probably did outside the situation. That's all intentional. It's all intentional. They don't want to talk about whatever domestic issues got arrested for or whatever he may have did in his past had for with alcohol, drugs, or whatnot. And I'm just throwing out as a hypothesis. I'm just saying they didn't look and they didn't care because it's a white person. And they and they add the icing on the cake, right? By letting us know his dad was a former state police officer and his brother's a part of Secret Service. That looked bad on the family all together, especially the brother because Secret Service and all that um is associated with um government in the sense of dealing with Capitol Hill and the White House, right? So I'm 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 just kind of like appalled by just looking at this, right? And like, wow, I remember growing up, 
you put your finger on I mean, you don't even have to punch a police. You can you can be stopping them from hurting you as a black person. You just got to do some time. You punch a police? Oh, you got 10, 15 years for a black person. But this the game that's being played on us and still being played on us. And the funny part about it, why they can do it, because they have the power. And why they have the power? Because we allow them to have the power because we don't want to come together and unify and realize, hey, once we start building up our community, once we start to become on, once we start setting the ball air for us, we'll be on tolerate from our own people, not long from them. We have to take our communities back. We have to realize that we're not being respected. We don't respect ourselves. It's, it's an insult. This, 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 this is an insult. It's an insult considering all the black men that have been charged and convicted for certain officer. And the funny part about it, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of other stuff that they're not even talking about. And I know it's sad because we so good them, we become so desensitized about what's going on around us. There's just a bunch of talk right now. But I'm here to tell you, there'll come a time we're not gonna allow it to happen. We're not gonna keep dealing with all this. This is literally sad. I just had to do a video about this, y'all. Um, I want everybody to realize this. What's happening to us is only happening because we allow it to happen. I'm talking about everything. We just really get ourselves together, get our community together. And separate those who are really sincere versus those who are fake. And that the people, that the people deal with them, not us. We don't have to worry about calling them out. It's going to be better for the future of our community. We have to push unity. We have to separate those who are not really sincere in this movement. We have to call out things that we see what's going on. But not just call it out family. We have to go do something. In our community, we have to do something in our lives. We have to make that difference. We have to make that change. And it starts personally and start collectively, individually and collectively. It starts with you getting yourself together, us getting ourselves together, and really calling out all this stuff and not literally calling out. But also, we're not even dealing with this anymore. So it is major, major TV. I had to cover this, y'all. This, this is really was... um. It's really what just, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? All my life, I, I've been through the system, right? And I watch how they railroad us for every little bit of thing. They, they talk, we talk about marijuana, you know what I'm saying? Which is one of the, you know, like, paler, nothing offensive, what have you. We watch all these white people that's on heroin, on pills and all that. And they don't get the nearest sentence that black people get. I'm, I'm so tired of saying systemic institutional racism. I'm more focused on what we're going to do about it. And I'm not too much concerned about them changing law. We create, we create in our situation where we have our laws and we, 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 we have in our um, code, of, rule of, code of conduct and so forth so on, as well as interacting with each other because there's a lot of hate, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of envy. There's a lot of egotism. There's a lot of things that's caused us not to really jail because we have unity. We have unity. And sometimes we get unified behind beautiful things. And most times, it be for like some said, uh, we we pour and having fun or what have you. We we gotta get it together, y'all. So look, um, thank you for listening to audio. Thank you for love and support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, hey, just wanna just share it with y'all. Y'all know who it be. Y'all stay focused, stay on cold, and just be black.